it's that time of year. You should really take your clutches off, go through and clean them. Let's start with the secondary. First, remove your bolt. Oh wow, strong fingers, look at that. Pull out the bushing. Pull off the clutch, make sure you don't lose the keyway pin. There it is. Lay it with the bolt and the bushing. Put it on your bench. Mark the damn thing so you remember what the hell it's for. Otherwise you lose it in this mess of freaking clutches that you don't remember what they're for. Half inch socket, three eighths wrench. Take these off. If you can break them loose. Been on there since the factory. Be a man about it. I make fancy tools for holding these. And everyone will tell you, Ooh, the thing will fly off if you take the bolts off without having a retaining apparatus. Body, 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 whatever. Take the nuts off. Be a man about it. Hold it down with your hand. It's not going to fly off and kill anybody if you're halfway smart. Wiggle it loose. I said be a man and I can't be one. My goodness. And it comes apart just like that. Pull it off. <clears throat> You're gonna inspect your spring. Since this spring's probably got 9,000 miles on it, it's shot. I don't know, maybe one of these will work. We'll see. Jeepers. If you can pull it out of the cap, you gotta pull it out of the cap. A little bit of work and swearing off camera, I got this pulled out. You get different adjustment settings. Not going to go over that today. You're going to pull your sheaves apart. Now here's some washers. Four of them to be exact. Different thicknesses. These are important. You don't want to lose these. So set them in, I don't know, a box full of shit where you might lose them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to clean all the crap off. I'll take the helix off. That's just an Allen wrench. But it's all full of dust and belt dust and it's disgusting. We're going to clean all that up. Use our fancy wire wheel. Get it shiny and nice. Oh yeah. You're going to want to check your bushings. These little brass bushings inside here. They're just pressed in. They're usually in good shape. But you don't want any major cracks or wear. Or that kind of stuff. There's one on the cap. And there's one on the stationary sheave. Excuse me, movable sheave. That's the movable sheave. Because it's got the bushing. Because it moves. That one's a little rougher, but it's going to be good enough for the girls I go out with. Sorry, honey. Back to these fancy washers. The reason you don't want to lose these is you're setting the spacing with these to set the belt deflection and well, not really the deflection but basically where the belt rides in the sheave when the sheaves fully compressed since this is the movable sheave as you speed up it widens out to change the gear ratio if you will but uh, based on how the motor is mounted the age of the belt etc you might have to shim your sheaves open or close to get the belt to sit sit inside the sheaves the right height that's why those are important clean these clutches out more often than this folks no reason to have that much belt dust in there.
Move to a different bench because we're going to end up using our wire reel here. But like I said, I'm going to take this, uh, it's, I call it a helix. The internet will call it a torque bracket. Most people will call it a helix. I'm going to take the helix off. We're going to clean all these pieces up. We're going to use this wire wheel. Have to kind of be careful using this though since these parts are aluminum. Um, if you spend too much time in any one spot, you can, it can kind of leave a mark that shows up and is noticeable we just want to take the dirt off so we'll take our time and uh make sure we don't spend too much time in one spot and ruin these things but we'll get everything cleaned up and shined up we'll get all this crud off them same with this shaft we'll get that cleaned up and looking nice again um so that we know everything's shifting smoothly to note is no typically I won't use the wire wheel on the entire clutch to clean it up this is just a clutch off a 98 powder special that I picked up that's been sitting a while um, it was corroded from the belt and the sheave so I just thought I'd hit hit all that and try to clean all that up typically all you'll check is like I said these inside bushings You'll make sure the rollers aren't just completely shot. And then you'll, you'll clean up these bearing surfaces because that's what these, uh, well, I call them bushings. I guess they're really bearings. That's what these bearings will ride on. You know, you can see a little, little bit of, um, you know, a nick or a track there, but it's actually, when you feel it with your hand, it's pretty smooth. And that's, that's the main thing. This isn't isn't rocket surgery so we're just looking for good enough according to the book the shafts and the bearings inside the movable parts should be within 20 thousandths of an inch of each other otherwise these you can press out and replace you press them out you get some new ones you apply some loctite you press them back in um, like I said, the book said 20 thousandths is a tolerance. If it's over that, you should replace it. Um, if you know me well enough, you know I do everything by the book 100% of the time. I'm a real Boy Scout, so I'm going to measure these. Let's see. 1.5 inches. We're 3 thousandths away from an inch and a half. Let's see. This one. 1.504, so about seven thousandths, and 1.51 would be, what, 13 thousandths? So I'd say we're well within our 20 thousandths of tolerance. Something to note on these old secondary clutches, these cat roller clutches, 
you'll see in the sheaves they got a, a timing mark um, cast into them. You also notice these holes they'll drill um, on the outside of the casting. What that is is they're balancing the clutch. What the tick mark or the casting mark is for is to help you align them. Um, what they'll do is they'll put the clutch together and they'll balance it <clears throat> with the, the sheaves aligned a certain way so that the clutch is balanced and ready to go for you. Some of the helixes will have a, a casting mark in them too, some of them won't. If you got one, you might as well line it up if you don't. Um, don't worry about it as much. So again, going by the book here, as we put our helix back on, the book will tell you, just finger tighten these, uh, these Allen screws down. You'll notice there's a little bit of play in there. They say to leave it at that until you get the rest of the, the uh, clutch put together, and the spring and the cap back on, everything back together, and then you'll reach down with, the, with an Allen wrench and tighten these finally. I suppose that's just to make sure this uh, torque bracket or helix is in the exact right position when it's all put together. So to put this thing back together, remember the washers we took out when we tore it apart. We'll lay down our movable sheath, lay down those washers. I'm putting the same amount of washers back in that we took out. I'll show in a different video, um, as I mentioned before. The number of washers depends on your belt deflection, but I'll do a video over checking belt deflection. Take our stationary sheave. Remember, we want to check those timing marks. And put the sheaves back together in the same direction. So I know mine's over here on the bottom. Find the top one. Lay my shims back down. Slide it together just like that. We'll take our spring. There's only one hole. We'll put it in there. On our cap or our cover, I'm going to use the middle hole. The middle hole is just your standard setting. Um, we can go over in a different video what all the different adjustments are for, but for now we'll just go with that one. I got this in a vise. Um, another way I do it is on the, on the ground. I'll lay it on top of two 2x4s, two and the reason for that is that's sticking out, but you want it to sit flat for this next part, so I'm going to just put some light tension on there. When I go to put the cover back on, springs in the middle hole, springs in the one hole on the sheave, I'm going to turn this clockwise as I push down just part of a turn and then I'll get it on just like that grab my nuts get those started and it is under some pressure but as I said taking it apart if you're just a little bit of a man about it, it ain't so bad. And then we'll stop there for a second. To finish it off, half inch socket. You're just going to go around. Give the nuts one ooga ooga. It doesn't have to be on there super tight. And yes, I said ooga ooga. It's a technical term. Um, now is when you take your 5 30 seconds Allen. And you finish tightening up the helix. Your Allen will reach right through the cover to the top of those socket head screws. You'll tighten that up. That's another just one ugga ugga. And you have now just successfully taken apart, cleaned up, checked, and reassembled your secondary clutch. Again, this is a roller secondary off an Articat. The Alright, I'm going to define the ugga ugga on the three cap screws, as the book calls them. So what the book calls out is 11 to 13 foot pounds. So grab your torque wrench, make sure it's there, 
before you fully move on. Don't over tighten the stuff, it's not worth it. Um, the book does not call out a, uh, a force on the, the Allen screws for the, for the helix.